Good evening. Welcome to Eretz Yisrael. I'm Avram Shira. We're holding in the 60th Torah of Lukuti Moran, the masterwork of Rabbi Nachman of Breslev. And tonight, the Rebbe is, we've reached a point where he's explaining to us the nature, the nature of the union of a man and a woman, but not just the nature of a man and woman, the nature of our soul with our body and our creator and the operation of our organs even. So how does this work? Well, we've already learned that the tzaddik has this power to free up the mute from being mute with speech. The tzaddik the tzaddik can give the person who cannot speak the power of speech. The tzaddik also has the power to give the woman who cannot give birth the power to give birth. So with those ideas in mind, the freeing of the mouth of the, 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 the mute and the fr freeing of the mouth of the barren, this, this alludes to this idea of the union of a male and a female. Let's see how it goes. So he says, This is the idea of breaking a clay vessel that they do it under every Jewish chuppah. They break a, a, a porcelain or clay vessel, a plate usually. And they, they break it at the time of the engagement, which is usually along with the, the time of the marriage vows. And the breaking of this vessel, what does it stand for? Remember, we just talked about the breaking of the, the silence of the mute and the barrenness of a woman. Well, it tells us, to teach us that now we're making a union of souls. A union of a male and a female together to get married. Why? Why do we get married? Because of love, obligation, loneliness. It's for the sake of giving birth. The human race was created to reproduce itself. Because we are images of God, all of the human race is an image of God. Because remember, God's infinite, so he has all the images. And having a baby is contributing to the image. So the two couple, the couple comes together in order to have a child, and the breaking of the vessel is the sign of the freeing up of the woman to have a baby by joining with a man. Shehu bechinat bitachon, and this is the, an aspect of faithfulness, trust. And of course, every man and woman, when they get together, they have this trust of loyalty to each other. This Bechinat Klayot, this connects to the idea he already taught us about the kidneys being the organs that contribute to the birth. Well, they're called Kleholada, the vessels, the tools of birth. Shehem Kleavod Holada. And these, and the heart of the husband will have faith in his wife. And by having faith in each other, they break the faith in the other side. See, because there's this other side out there that doesn't want humanity to achieve its goal, which of course is bringing God down to earth. It's a created obstacle. It's an oppositional force to our completion and fulfill, fulfillment. And that oppositional force appears everywhere, in everything. And it's powerful. And we've seen it all. Everybody's seen it in their lives. 
But there's a faith in that force. See, this is really where the problem is, is we have faith in the evil. We have faith in the opposition. We have faith in the negativity because we feel it in experiences. And why wouldn't you? That you want to do something good and you get an obstacle right immediately when you decide to do so. Or you decide to do something not, uh, you know, to not do something bad and all of a sudden you find yourself doing it. That's that sitra akhara, but the faith in it is the real problem. And by ha by having this this sharing of vows, the union of a man, a woman and a man, the idea of faithfulness to each other, in order to produce a child, all of that contributes to the breaking of the faith in the other side. And this is why they break a clay vessel at the wedding, which is an idea of if the when I. Breaking the power of the other side is people that the verse tells us from Isaiah that people had faith in their deception in business. They had faith in their treachery in relationships. It's like a tool. Once it works, you use it again and again. Even, you know, a bank robbery. <laughs> if it works the first time, he's going to use the same things the next time. And he tells us, and this is like, Ushvara kanavel yotzrim. And he breaks it like a, a potter who takes a pot that doesn't come out right. You ever notice? You ever go to a pottery workshop? Out back, there's a pile of broken shards, a pile of broken pieces of clay. Those are all the ones that the, 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 the craftsmen threw away. And this is what people do with their relationships, unfortunately. Instead of building what we need to build. But I called this class the Kabbalah of the Kiss because before the union can take place, the first there is a kiss. And then the rabbis teach there is a hug. There's a union between the spirits of a person when they kiss. And then there's a union between the heart when they hug. And then there's a union between the body when they have the intimate act. So each of those is one after the other. And there's an order to it. And the order to it is, of course, because we connect first through our mind. And when we like each other's minds... We want to get closer. And then, when you get closer and you have the level of the kiss, you're, where you're trading your ruach, because the ruach is the spirit that comes out of your mouth. When that spirit is traded in the mouth through a kiss, the two is slowly beginning to become one. The male and the female become one through the kiss at first. And then, there's the hug. And the hug is where you use your whole body to well, to hug. <laughs> but really, of course, it's the union of the level of the heart. The, the, the level of trusting another person enough that you let them in so close to you that they completely surround you like a hug. That takes, again, another level of trust. You have to trust somebody before you can kiss them because it's kind of an intimate, you know, you don't just put your lips on somebody else's lips, right? And the same thing with hugging a person. So these levels are levels of trust, of union. And trust of the union is that we're doing this for a reason, a divine reason. To recreate the human form, the form of God in this world, to perpetuate the human race for the glory of the one who created us. So when we both have that idea, there's a building of trust. We're not getting married for money. We're not getting married for beauty. We're not getting married for lust. We're getting married because we want to bring holy children into the world to carry on the legacy of this beautiful work. So it starts with the kiss. It goes to the heart, which is the hug. And then it ends with the physical intimacy that we all, well, we've heard of or know of. <laughs> Okay, and, and so each stage is another level of trust, of giving of yourself, of sharing yourself with someone else and trusting each other. And when the trust is broken, 
Well, we know what happens. We don't need to go there. But the breaking of the plate at the at the chuppah, at the wedding, or at the engagement ceremony, this is the idea that we're breaking the bond that kept this woman from having children. The bond, breaking the bond of the belief in something outside the Holy Union, which he calls the faith in the other side, which we talked about already. So, you know, it's something that, well, almost all human beings know and experience. But to understand it, according to the Kabbalah and according to Rabbi Nachman's teachings, we, we suddenly understand much deeper what it is that we're doing. And that gives much greater meaning, purpose, and direction to what we do and to our lives in general. And when you have life with purpose and life with meaning, then you're going to find life with joy. And when you have life with joy, <laughs> things work much better. And you have a lot less divorces and a lot more people having children. And there, there's a, endless things can be said about this idea because of especially what's going on in our generation. But we know the truth that why we're here. We're here because we're images of God that want to express themselves in the physical realm. Have a great day, a great week. We'll be back in touch on all the other outlets and continuing our Rabbi Nachman teachings on Patreon. Go all the best.